It is the Wednesday evening edition of the Valley's Most In-Depth Weather Forecast video. Hi everyone, it's Eric here, and uh, another beautiful day. Today we're going to make it, what, three or four in a row coming up on our Thursday. In fact, Friday will be even better, but we do have some interesting things to talk about for the upcoming weekend and beyond that as well. When we look back over the last 31 days, the temperatures compared to the average, at least the high temperatures compared to the average, a distinct, you know, kind of pattern change occurred right around February 24th, which incidentally is my birthday. And I, you know, it's one of those dates that I kind of, uh, you know, always remember, of course, because it's my birthday. But also, I, I usually think about that week in February is oftentimes being when winter's back gets broken a little bit. Yes, it can be chilly. There can even be some snow, of course, beyond that point. But the worst of the winter usually behind us by Valentine's Day or my birthday on February the 24th. And this year it really worked out that we saw a distinct pattern change at that point in the consistent cold. We left that behind. Yeah, we've had a few chilly days, including one day in the lower 20s for highs on the second day of the month. But really, the, the warmth has outdueled the uh, cool weather uh, thus far in the month of March, and it will continue to do so this week and next. And spring is really doing its thing across a lot of the lower 48 this evening. 84 in Dallas, 77 in St. Louis. 74 in Atlanta. We're actually one of the cool spots in the, in the uh, areas east of the Rockies at 55 here in the 7 o'clock hour. Notice we do have much colder air several hours to our north up across New England and interior parts of uh, Quebec and Ontario as well, but that cool air is not coming our way anytime real soon. The weather pretty quiet once again this evening with a couple of ex exceptions across the country. Some rain from San Francisco up into Northern California with snow in the Sierra Nevada mountains. And we have a severe thunderstorm watch in the yellow here uh, from around Dallas down towards some of the northern suburbs of Houston and heading over towards northern Louisiana and extreme southwestern Arkansas as well. Otherwise, yeah, from coast to coast, the weather is pretty quiet this evening. And with a clear sky overhead, there'll be a good chance to check out a flyby of the International Space Station this evening. We haven't had a lot of really good evening flyby opportunities in recent weeks and months, but this will be a pretty good one. Uh, appearing in the sky, southwest sky, at about 926. It'll be up there for three or four minutes. Disappearing at about 47 degrees above the horizon in the west-northwest sky at about 929 to 930. So definitely worth checking out. And of course, other things in the sky worth checking out, including tomorrow night or early Friday morning, the total lunar eclipse. A total lunar eclipse, of course, much more common than a total solar eclipse, which we were lucky enough to enjoy almost a year ago, believe it or not, uh, coming up uh, in early April. It'll be the one-year the one year anniversary of that kind of once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, but a total lunar eclipse still very cool. I wish it was occurring at a more a reasonable time of the day, but uh, totality lasting from about 2.30 in the morning up through about 4 o'clock in the morning, the maximum totality right around 3 a.m. Friday morning. And with the weather cooperating, I do, I do think this will be worth checking out if you don't mind being up at that unholy hour of 2 or 3 or 4 in the morning on Friday. Uh, front stays off to our south on, on Thursday. This is going to be a fine day. We will, just won't get into the really warm air just yet on Thursday. That will happen Friday into Saturday as that front kind of washes out and a warm front lifts off to the north. All systems go for a May preview on Friday. A little bit of a gusty breeze developing on Friday. We'll notice the breeze at times on Saturday as well, and I think especially Saturday night will be particularly windy. Now, what about rain on Saturday? Uh, you know, I know there's a lot of uh, St. Patrick's Day festivities at local establishments, especially on Saturday, uh, with the holiday itself, of course, coming a couple of days later on Monday. So the weather will be all important for those who want to enjoy a green beverage, perhaps out on a patio somewhere across the area. And this is far from a washout on Saturday, but there could very well be a decaying line of showers that pushes through before Saturday morning is through with a lot of dry time for the afternoon. Now, late in the day, we still have that chance of a gusty thunderstorm, but I'm still just not very impressed with the overall severe weather chances here locally. This is today's day four severe weather outlook from the Storm Prediction Center. We'll see the day three outlook issued at about 2 or 3 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning. We'll see what they uh, what they think. I kind of suspect we'll be in a, a level one marginal risk Saturday into Saturday night in eastern Ohio and western PA with perhaps a slight risk extending northward up into central Ohio. But this is the uh, risk of probabilities right now. Over, overall, of course, a bigger severe weather <laughs> event likely in parts of the deep south on Saturday and into Saturday night. And parts of the east coast down into the Carolinas may have a gusty thunderstorm or two during the course of the day on Sunday. You know, one of the things I like to look at more and more over the last couple of years has been machine learning weather modeling or 
AI, artificial intelligence, weather modeling, and I'm going to show you a little bit of that this evening. This is uh, some AI modeling from the European Center showing severe weather risks. Right here would be Saturday and Saturday night. Over here would be Sunday and into Sunday night. I, I think this is, generally speaking, pretty reasonable. You know, it shows Saturday and Saturday night the highest risks of severe weather, of course, in the Deep South. But the risk really doesn't get that high in eastern Ohio. It, it kind of, you know, there's a, a maxima, if you will, in central and western Ohio up into parts of Michigan, but not a lot in eastern Ohio, western PA. It's kind of interesting, the, the machine learning off the European model anyway. Um, shows a higher severe weather risk during the daylight hours on Sunday in eastern Ohio and western PA. I kind of suspect this idea is a little too far to the west, but once you're east of I-79, could there be a couple of gusty thunderstorms Sunday? Central PA down towards Washington, Baltimore, maybe as far east as Philadelphia? Yeah, I think that's a possibility. I'm not real gung-ho on severe weather chances on Sunday around our true viewing area. That's the European model. We can also look at machine learning from the you know, that's kind of based off the GFS uh, modeling, and it's a little more aggressive with these severe weather chances on Saturday and into Saturday night. Notice it has those red colors getting up into eastern Ohio and western PA, but I think the GFS is a little bit of an outlier. The regular GFS and the machine learning GFS, a little bit of an outlier with how aggressive it is with pushing the severe weather chances off to the east. Now, you know, the overall ingredients are kind of still the same as I've discussed in, in the last couple of videos. We have a lot of wind shear aloft um, during the second half of Saturday into Saturday night. We don't have a tremendous amount of instability. We don't have a very good trigger until overnight Saturday night when a cold front approaches. By that point, though, the atmosphere, you know, will be in nocturnal mode. It won't be real unstable. And, I, you know, while there certainly will be some gusty winds around and you want to secure those loose outdoor items true severe weather at that point I, I think is fairly unlikely in our part of Ohio and Pennsylvania. Alright, longer range thoughts. Uh, this is uh, today's run of the what we call the European Extended. The set of modeling actually goes out 46 days and we can look at uh, kind of seven day chunks here. And what I want you to take away from this is, yeah, there's going to be a couple of cool shots including one for St. Patrick's Day on Monday and another towards the end of next week. But overall the warmth will continue to outduel the cool probably about through the end of the month. But the modeling is pretty consistent, not only the European Extended here, but other medium and long range modeling that the first week to 10 days of April may feature a pattern change, at least temporarily, more than maybe just a day or two. This may be a week long pattern change, maybe up to 10 days even. Um, during that first week to 10 days or so of April, I, I would expect some cooler weather compared to the average at the beginning of the month. But yeah, the rest of March, you know, I think we're pretty locked into on average a pretty mild pattern with again just a day or two here and there where it looks a little bit cooler. We'll have an update on the weekend forecast and much, much more Thursday evening. Thanks for watching on this Wednesday evening. Have a great night and I will see you back here Thursday night.